Well, g'day everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna take you through some basic editing of Blackmagic raw footage in DaVinci Resolve. And if you're new here, I'm Michael. I'm a filmmaker and cinematographer from Melbourne, Australia. I run my own video production company and I started this channel just as a way to give back to the community that I found on YouTube. So let's jump on over to the screen and dive into Resolve. So you'll see here, I've just got a couple of clips in Resolve. Uh, this clip here is basically a clip shot in the daytime uh, of this talent here, a blonde girl. And then they've got a clip of her, the same talent, the same model here, just in a dark kind of alleyway, early morning with just some sun on her face. And then the third clip is just pointing upwards in the morning or evening, not sure, but there's not a lot of light in the photos. Now, before I get into this, this is not a commercial workflow, uh, nor will I use professional coloring nodes or node trees, that sort of thing. I'm not gonna do that in this particular video. I'm not necessarily a colorist, but I have done some big jobs with color grading, but I just wanna show you how easy it is to kind of pull nice grades from Blackmagic Raw footage. I'm gonna also show you reference grades as well. So what you'll find here is uh, over on the website, this is where I got it from Blackmagic Design's own website. This video was done by, uh, called Zero Two, was done by Dima Kalenda, shop Dim by Dima Kalenda, and it was colored by Tom Majerski uh, from Tetra Grade. So what I'm gonna do is I'm pulled the footage from here, so this is where I got the footage from, and then I'm also going to pull the footage or some reference grades out of this video here. So I've got all that already set up in Resolve, so let's jump straight in and get straight into this. So first off, um, I wanna sort of take you through the process of how I kind of jump through what I'm wanting with the footage. And basically I'm wanting to check the raw footage. This is also anamorphic de-squeezed two to one. So I've also already gone and interpreted the footage. And the way to do that is basically come up to the footage, right click, go down to clip attributes and make sure this aspect ratio is set to two to one pixel aspect ratio. So I'll show you how this footage comes in. Uh, basically without this, it's square. I think it's square, let's have a look, square. So without that, then the footage in the timeline would look like this. So this is not what we want. So we're gonna come back over here and we're going to go clip attributes and we're going to and I'm gonna leave a link below as well so you can find out exactly where this footage is and you can download it for yourself as well. Um, I'll leave a link to the Blackmagic site. So anyway, we've got this now in our de-squeezed, um, you know, widescreen anamorphic, which is perfect. And we're gonna jump on over to the color tab. And basically what I wanna do is look at the Blackmagic RAW because this is RAW data. So it has some scope to change and to manipulate things in this raw data. And I've already set this up. Um, this would usually come in as camera metadata, something like this. So all of it's kind of baked in already. And so what I did is I came down and I just um, chose clip and I changed some things here. Now, the main thing I changed was this was all shot in 5600 Kelvin and I thought it was a little bit too warm. So I took it down to 4600 Kelvin. And you'll see if I go up to 5600 Kelvin here, basically kind of looks a little bit washed out. Her skin looks super paley, like super sunny, that kind of thing. So I just dropped this right down to 5,600, around about thereabouts. And I just felt that looked a little bit better for my starting point. So that's kind of now my starting point. I also did a highlight recovery because if you look over here on the waveform, um, there's some kind of highlights that are clipped. And I think it might be more prevalent in you see her t-shirt. Yeah, so when we see her t-shirt, there's a, this clipping over here in the highlights. So I actually just click that highlight recovery and that allows DaVinci Resolve to, to clean up a little bit of that highlight detail from the raw footage. So that's my starting point. Now what I wanna do is I wanna look at curves. And so I'm gonna come over to the curves tab here, which is already selected. Looks like it's already got come, some kind of correction on there, has it? No, nothing. I'm just gonna clear out any correction I might have by clicking that there. And then I'm going to go into the curves. And I just wanna make a sort of adjustment here to bring the shadows down and to bring up the highlights a little bit, or just sort of play with this, these highlights and shadows. So 
I wouldn't say it's overexposed. It's not necessarily clipped in the highlights, but it's been shot quite high. And so they've pushed the sensor to kind of the top end of its game in what it can do. Uh, and I think that's because they're sort of shooting into like an open sky and they're wanting to capture all the skin tone detail. But you can see we're almost overexposed here on the collar of the t-shirt and it's just not looking great without some really, some dedicated work here. So I'm gonna pull basically a lot of this shadow in, but I don't wanna do this cause I'm kind of damaging, you know, this skin tone area here. So I don't wanna do anything too crazy, but I just wanna sort of get the image a little bit more in range for me, but then I don't want her skin to look dark and dull either. Still want her skin to be well exposed. So I'm going off the t-shirt where I think it's sort of starting to clip a little bit. So something like that for my first adjustment. And then I'm gonna come in and look at saturation and just pull up saturation to my sort of taste and liking. And I'll probably go a little bit more oversaturated than Than what's usual, but that sort of looks pretty good as a starting point, starting reference for me. Um, I tend to think that is not too bad. That looks pretty good. And so you can see I've got there with really just a couple of steps, like nothing major, just like a curve adjustment, simple curve adjustment, pulling down the shadows and just opening up this a little bit more and not necessarily bringing highlights up because we're already hitting the top end of the highlights are already sort of in the clipped range there and then just adding some saturation. And really that is as easy as it gets to kind of pull a good grade. Now, this is kind of my grade, I suppose you could say this one here. And I wanna see how close I got to the actual original film, the film that was color graded. Uh, as we mentioned before by Tom Majerski. So I wanna check out what he did and where he landed. So I'm gonna import a screenshot and I'm going to jump into the color tab and I'm gonna, to... so this is sort of where I've landed and this is where the colorist has landed. So in a way, what I've done there, just super quick to pull this grade is really in line with this colorist. Now he's probably done some more work on the sky. He's cleaned up the skin a little bit. You can see it's a little bit cleaner here, but in terms of the color rendition and everything, a mine might be pushing towards magenta slightly, but you can see within a very short period of time, I've got a grade that is really quite reasonable and looks quite decent. So let's jump to the next clip and we'll have a look here. It's just a little clip of same talent. She's just dancing under uh, a railway or some kind of subway or something like that. So we're gonna do the same kind of thing again where we wanna jump into the raw of the clips here. And again, I've just done a little uh, adjustment here, again, down to 4,600 Kelvin. So taking the Kelvin value down from 5,600, how it was shot. And basically no need for highlight recovery here because you're already basically working in this lower section. If you look at the waveform, very much down on the other end of the spectrum. So this is really pushing the lower end of the sensor. And so all I wanna do is I wanna add a node. I didn't add a node before on the last one, I just did it on this node here, but I'll add a node this time so I can leave this spare. And again, I just wanna look at my curves adjustments on the main curves to custom. And I don't really wanna pull any of the shadow detail down because we're already really low down in the shadow. So I'm just really wanting to pull up highlights and that's really all I'm doing is I'm wanting her skin to kind of pop out here and pulling up her skin a little bit and just seeing what what we can do there to lift up her skin There's really no detail in the top there basically creating a curves adjustment like that and then jumping into saturation again and having a look at what we can build in with some saturation. I actually like what that's bringing in. It's quite a moody kind of look because it's bringing in this color, this kind of purple color. You can see it's a bluey, purpley, a little bit of magenta in the skin. So that looks really, really nice. And there's not a lot more that I would even do to this clip. This is pretty much, you know, 
where I think this clip should should land. Like, yeah, wow, it's even it's super quickly. I've pulled this grade. So let's bring up the reference grade again and have a look at where our colorist might have landed with this one. And I'll just drop it into here. And let's have a look. So these are the two side by side. So it looks like the colorist has given a little bit more color in the skin and potentially brought up the shadows a little bit more. Um, but basically with those two sort of really short um, adjustments, I'm almost in range there. Now you can see there's more of a blue in these areas where there's more of a yellow or like a kind of where there's more of a yellow, it's a lot warmer. So let's warm it up a bit. And this might be because I made that original cor correction to 4600 Kelvin. So let's jump in and just warm it up a little bit and see what happens there once we warm it up a little bit. So I'm going to go back to the raw tab because I see if that's going to fix this cool kind of coolness that we've got um, or not. So there it is. Like I just basically super quickly adjusted that um, that raw. Yeah, so I just super quickly adjusted that uh, slider for the white balance and it looks like we're way closer to what the colorist originally intended. And so basically now all I'm gonna do is let's pull out some saturation because I think I'm a little bit over on the skin. So I'm just gonna pull out a little bit of saturation and I'm pretty much on board with the colorist's idea for that. So that's without and that's with. So you can see this is kind of a not a very commercial looking grade. It's more cinematic, more of a film grade. And so I think, yes, uh, there's not a lot that we're doing to the footage. There's not a lot of cleanup necessary because it was shot really well. But you can see it's pulling a grade that's so similar to what was intended or what was actually produced um, just with a few simple changes within DaVinci Resolve. So let's jump to the last clip and this is a much darker clip again and shooting again into the sky, which is a little bit more challenging uh, for camera sense and stuff, but the camera's done really well. So let's just put a node. And again, we're just gonna go to the curves adjustment and we're just gonna have a little go at curves here. We don't really wanna push this too high because we can easily get that overexposed. So just give it a little more light, but I think I'm gonna pull the shadows up quite a bit here because I wanna see her skin and I wanna get more of her face, you know, popped in this framing. So now I'm gonna pull up the saturation and just not wanting to overdo the saturation again i'm at 5700 kelvin so i might just drop back to around 5200 kelvin and so that's sort of that's kind of close to what i think is good for this um and you know, not pushing it too hard. You can see this, the sky is right up the top here, the waveforms, and the shadows are right down the bottom here. And then skin sort of in this area here. And I could do that by qualifying it, but I don't really feel I need to qualify this. Um, the skin's quite underexposed maybe, but that's the mood of this particular shot. Um, so I think maybe pull up a little more of the shadow. So yeah, just adding a little more in there, but I wanna get rid of some of this faded look. So I'm going to pull down some of these shadows and really crush some of these shadows. So really get rid of that faded look. And so it's really interesting because, you know, she, there's this sort of, um, this V kind of shape of light and then her face and it's really well shot, like a Dutch angle, quite a cool shot. So I'm just wanting to get her face popping in this frame. So that's pretty much where I'd land with this and wouldn't really need to do that much more um, with this. And so I think that looks pretty good. Now, I wanna have a look if it matches up with this other clip. So I'm just gonna open up and see with the skin matches up here. And we kinda of don't match up too well. Wanna sort of add a little more 
maybe light wise you need a little bit more light a little bit more warmth to this so i'm going to add a little bit more warmth and see what that does i'm going to for that go into the gain or the offset and i'm going to do that by the log wheels and go into the offset here and just adding in more warmth to the shot just pushing it towards magenta slash yellow this way and just subtly but i just wanted to get more warmth in and that's more where I want it to be to match up. Uh, so super happy with that. Now let's have a look at what the original intent was for this. Uh, and I have the screenshot here. So I'm just gonna pull that into here. And let's see how close we came to matching up. Well, not super close there. He's got much more of a blue tone and that would be like a mood kind of based tone and I think it looks like it's in highlights and midtones where he's pulled blue so what I might do is let's just go to highlights highlights a little bit and midtones a little bit green blue and more green I think in midtones So we're a little bit closer. And that's a little bit closer now to the original intent from the colorist. So, but there's a little bit more work to be done on this one. But as you can see, like from the beginning to getting a grade that is almost on par, we haven't really done a lot of work. So that's sort of all I wanted to show you in this video. And hopefully you've got something from this. Pulling a simple grade just using curves adjustments and some of the raw data for Blackmagic raw footage. And I've actually just released a lot on my website, michaeldrowley.com for Blackmagic raw footage specifically. It's called my Cine Vlog LUT and it's part of my Cine LUTs 3.0 series. So check that out in the link below if you needed something just to put onto your footage and apply and just in one click kind of get a really nice look from your Blackmagic RAW footage. And that was developed for the Pocket 6K and the Pocket 4K. So it'll work with all Blackmagic RAW footage, but it's specifically developed for Gen 5 color on the Blackmagic Pocket 4K, 6K and 6K Pro. Well, that's all for this video. If you got something from it, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe if you're not already. And I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.